to NURFM.com, a broadcast service of the University of Newcastle. From the University of Newcastle Laureate, Professor John Bowain. Good morning to you, John. Thank you for joining us today and great to have you here. Pleased to be here. Interesting topic. I'm very interested to hear what you say. Fraud, foolishness and error in scientific research, John. Yes. Well, there are mistakes made in everything. Uh, Before I start telling some quite flamboyant stories, I want to emphasize that I think that Generally, science is less subject to fraud, foolishness, and error than any mm. other part of human life. I've, I've been a treasurer of a state political party, and I've been involved in, in a software business. And, uh, you know, it happens everywhere. But a lot of things we do depend on the reliability of research, whether it's the drugs we take for high blood pressure or... Uh, when the Curiosity rover lands on Mars, I mean, there's been an amazing mistake made some years ago where kilometers were not translated into miles and one of the Mars missions crashed. Oh. So it can be everything from something as dumb as that mm. to deliberate fraud. I've, I've just written an article with my co-blogger, David Bailey, from Lawrence Berkeley Labs in uh, outside of San Francisco, uh, on exactly the subject that, that we're talking about, and it'll come out tomorrow in the conversation, which is a very cool uh, public policy science Australian magazine. Apparently, it's now the most read Australian uh, mm. public not-for-profit, more than crikey. Well, what have you found that you can share with us this morning? Well, uh, some, some things uh, that we described, uh, pulling together things I knew from the past, was what those sort of things happen. The first thing that happens is a lot of sloppiness. Mm-hmm. And that's more common in the, I would say, in the social sciences and clinical medicine where the researchers often actually aren't very well equipped to deal with scientific, statistical, mathematical data. They're the kind of re- problems that come from rushing to deadlines and, oh, I'll fix it later, and you never do. Mm-hmm. And then when we answer, I'm going to tell you about some cases in a minute, mm-hmm. but then when we answered the question of why does it happen, I, I wrote, well, apart from the fact that scientists are people, fame is fame and money is money, here are five other reasons. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, there are corrupt people, people who want an edge, people who get addicted to mm-hmm. getting away with things, mm-hmm. uh, pressure to get promoted when you don't have enough stuff. There taking are so shortcuts, men, possibly. Taking shortcuts mm-hmm. and to begin with doing it only because you were rushed and then seeing, well, I got away with it, that's easier. And there's an amazing case at the moment of a, actually was the lead article in the New York Times weekend magazine last weekend, um, I mean a week ago, about a, a Dutch social psychologist called Sem- Sempel, uh, sorry, a Staple, it's not spelt the same way, but it sounds mm-hmm. like Staples, uh, who has faked at least 55 of his papers and 10 of the PhD theses of his students. And after being caught, he admitted that he preferred beautiful in data that he invented to dirty, nasty data that was real. Uh, And he clearly seems to have started just by massaging his data Mm. and ended up kind of like a junkie absolutely addicted and he said he never he never wrote about a bogus experiment that wasn't beautiful <laughs> you know and he's one of these people involved in the it's been very quite celebrated there are these priming effects as they're called so for example if if you go into exam after being shown a picture of a a bikey gang uh, as opposed to a picture of a road scholar you'll do worse if you've seen the picture of the bikey gang, or so some of the kind of research will success, suggest. And and I was thinking about this the other night. I went into a restaurant. There was a big mirror there. Now, I'm a bit overweight, and if I look at the mirror before I eat, I'll eat less. Mm. That's priming. Now, he'd invented all these gorgeous experiments, clever experiments that people liked. Just fact is he sat down and he was like a composer at his daughter keyboard making music to make it seem convincing. Ah, I like his justification for it. That is interesting. What else can you share with us there that we'll be able to find on conversation? Well, what we did was to mention some of the famous uh, frauds of the past. Now, of course, the most successful frauds never get found. Right. Uh, maybe that's, that's not putting a man on the moon, is it? That's not no, 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 no. Although, though, there's a wonderful uh, spoof version of this in which there's a there's a website that purports to show the existence of the moon as a scientific hoax. Oh, okay. Not just putting a man on it. And they okay. do, it's very good. They use exactly the same language. And besides, we have to believe it was from scientists. We can't see the details, just a blob with our own eye, etc. cetera. <laughs> um, uh, so maybe the Shroud of Turin was a deliberate okay. forgery. Uh, you know, that's pressing some religious buttons, right. but it might be a forgery. It was, if it has been, it's a very successful one. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. It also served a lot of people's purposes. Um, when I was a kid, and I'm about 60, so in the early 50s, a very, very famous piece of British archaeology, uh, paleontology called the Piltdown Man, which was discovered in 1903 or so, was revealed in 50 years later to be a deliberate fraud. Oh. Because the old, the then old man who, as a young man, put together a bit of a monkey and a bit of a human, uh, admitted it so he could go easily to his grave. Now that's 50 years in which it was part of the science books, as you know. So that's that can happen. Okay. Now, John, if we want to find out more details, can we go? Where do we go to for conversation? Yeah. If you type in uh, the Google conversation, search? yes, yeah. at, uh, dot a, dot com dot au. Uh, it comes out every day. It's a fantastic one stop for science. Lovely. And um, there we try in detail to describe uh, some of the frauds. Oh, let me finish with another interesting example that's been a huge buzz, particularly in North America. Two of the leading economists uh, had a best selling book called This Time is Different, where they argue that if you don't pay the bills, you, get, you go bankrupt. So they've been one of the main groups. They're called Carmen Reinhardt and Kenneth Rogoff. Rogoff's not, they're both at Harvard. He's mm-hmm. also a, a chess grand champion, so he's a pretty smart guy. Um, turns out that they left a, a, a row out of their Excel spreadsheet when they added up their numbers. Oh. And when you do the numbers the right way, they, you don't get the same answer that they did. You, you, it turns out that some countries like Australia and Canada have done pretty well spending their way out of austerity, oh, uh, out nice. of bad times. So um, there's a message here. It's a message about all fraud. How do you deal with it? Well, firstly, maybe we stop pressuring people to publish for silly reasons. Uh, secondly, we ask people like you to be more critical. Mm. Um, if something is, it smells bad, it probably is. If, it, if there's smoke, there's probably fire. Uh, and often with some of the recent frauds, it would have only have taken somebody one Google search to say, hey, wait a minute, better dig a little more. But uh, the main thing that makes a difference is if everybody has to make their data available, Rogoff and Reinhardt refuse to, and they're paying the price in big time. Okay. Hey, most definitely we will be able to do that Google search. Have a look for the conversation tomorrow. We'll be able to read further about the page Mm. that you are publishing and find out more details about that. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. It's a pleasure, David, and you can go back to your normal space guru next time. There we go. University of Newcastle's Laureate Professor John Bowain joining us in for Professor John O'Connor, who's back in a couple of weeks' time. Now a quarter to 12 at 2 in URFM 103.7.